lecture is going to be uh, recorded, is being recorded right now. Today is the 27th of September 2021. This is the project management in VH7. Uh, All the lectures will be uploaded to YouTube. You can access uh, the, the videos if you go to www.profh4.com. Then you click on lectures. And then uh, this uh, will, will guide you to the uh, YouTube uh, site where you have all the, all the playlists. Uh, just click on your playlist uh, of this lecture and um, you will just access uh, all the material. Okay? At the end of each lecture you get uh, a PDF with all these notes. So I guess it's uh, full service. If you have any feedback on how I can make this lecture better for you, just let me know, okay? Just uh, do not hesitate. Uh, if you have any idea of how this lecture can be more amenable or better for you, uh, let me know. Also, if my English is too fast or you don't understand it, just... Uh, just uh, just say it, okay? I will try. I can also uh, I can also repeat all the concepts in German or most of the concepts in German. <clears throat> the exam will be in. Um, it's also important. The exam. Uh, the official language of the exam is English. However, if um, and if anybody asks me, I will always say the the language is English. If uh, some of you have problems with uh, English uh, to express certain concepts, you can also write uh, part of the, the exam in German uh, and I will say nothing as long as nobody says anything. So if you uh, complain because I am also helping you to do it in German, then everything will be in English. Okay, so anyway... Um, so, any questions so far before we start? <clears throat> so, again, apologies for not being there. Uh, I hope we can meet soon. We're going to, uh, in this lecture, this is a lecture about project management, but there is no way to express uh, project management uh, fully if we don't take also uh, another concept into consideration that's why we're going to start today with uh, a uh, the dichotomy process and project management okay so we're going to be talking about project and process And these two concepts are uh, very important. We're going to be dealing with them the whole uh, evening today. Okay, so in, in reality, we're talking about process management and project management. Okay. So let's start describing uh, these concepts in detail. So the first one, uh, the first concept is uh, here uh, called management. Okay. So we have three concepts, one, two, and three. Just wait a minute, I'm going to ask my son to be quiet. Manuel, ¿te puedes callar? Excuse me. So we have three concepts, process, uh, project, and management. So let's start by the first one. Let's say, what, what do we mean when we say uh, we're going to be talking about management? And you might think, wow, this is a very broad question. Well, there are, there are many definitions of what management is. 
Let me give you one uh, that is uh, equivalent to say uh, leadership. And I am not going to differentiate between management and leadership. So le some literature does, but I will not. So let's say uh, this is you, okay? You are the leader of the future. And uh, you are, uh, let's say, uh, a, a factory manager or a production manager or a sales manager in, uh, in your company. And uh, you have uh, a certain set of uh, goals. Okay, so this is your, let's say, your arrow that you're trying to shoot with your... Um, Mm, fancy uh, um, weapon. Okay, so this is uh, this is you trying to hit a goal, uh, which is uh, being given to you. Okay, so your boss is telling you what is your score, and we will talk about that later on. What are uh, what are good or bad or uh, certainly um, interesting KPIs to measure success. Um, let's say you're trying to hit a goal. Well, you, you will notice I, I'm trying to make uh, um, I'm trying to make drawings. Uh, it, I think it makes it more understandable. Okay, so if you're annoyed by the drawings, I'm sorry, but I think it's make it Make, makes it easier to understand. So you're trying to hit your goal. Okay, you, you try to achieve your goal by increasing trust. Okay. Trust. So I define, it's not the only definition, but I define um, uh, management or leadership by um, the sentence is uh, achieving, achieve goals while increasing trust. Okay. Both need to be achieved. Both. So if you uh, so in German uh, Ziele erreichen uh, by gleichzeitigem Vertrauensaufbau. If you achieve your goals as a leader, but the trust is lost, then. Um, your goals will not be sustainable. Wenn uh, Sie Ihre Ziele erreichen, aber das Vertrauen geht verloren, werden Sie Ihre Ziele nicht nachhaltig erreichen. Und wir wollen Nachhaltigkeit. We want sustainability in the goal achievement. If uh, you uh, increase trust, but you're, you miss your goals, then you have made some friends, but you haven't been a leader. Okay? So you need both. You need uh, to achieve your goals while you are increasing trust. Hmm? And this is very important. This is our definition uh, of um, um, leadership or management. And when we think about leadership, we are trying to achieve certain goals. We will talk about goals a lot. Um, while we increase trust. So we need to take the people into consideration, okay? So when we talk about trust, we need to be talking about an, uh, let's say, an organizational setting that explains, uh, so let's say 1.1, 1 .1, uh, organizational design that um, explains the nature of or, or how should we understand trust okay because it's something that maybe 
okay, you know what it is, but uh, it's something that maybe it's uh, difficult to grasp. So let's say um, we have four, I, I call this the four level organizational design uh, uh, structure, okay? So when I ask you in the exam, what is the four level organizational design structure? You just tell me this shit, okay? So the first level, uh, we put it here, first level. Is it, is it understandable? Is it okay, the, the speed or any, anything too fast or is it okay? So if somebody complains, just, just let me know, okay? If I, I can go slower or faster or whatever. So we have here a, an individual level, okay? So we start with the individual level. Individual level. Uh, here we start with uh, you, okay? So the, the individual. This is each one of you. You're, as I said, you, I, I consider you the future leaders of the industry, so this is you. This is you, okay, so. And at this level, we need uh, one um, thing, which is trustworthiness, trust. Worthiness. In German, Vertrauenswürdigkeit. Okay? So the individual needs to be trustworthy. This means that he needs a balance between character and competence. So the character is uh, who you are, what you can, in the competence is what you can do. Okay? You would not I, I guess uh, call a doctor and uh, engage in in a in a doctor uh, appointment who uh, has a very good character but has a competence uh, from let's say twenty years ago. So this doctor is as doctor not trustworthy. You would not engage in with a doctor that um, has a very good competence, but is prescribing some recipe that, uh, or some, some drug or operation that you don't need. Hmm? Uh, ich wiederhole auf Deutsch, uh, um vertrauenswürdig zu sein als Arzt, brauchen wir ein Gleichgewicht, uh, oder als uh, egal was, in welcher Rolle, uh, ein Gleichgewicht zwischen Charakter und Kompetenz. Okay? Uh, Ihr, ihr geht nicht zu einem Arzt, der hat einen super Charakter, aber hat eine Kompetenz von vor 20 Jahren. Also er hat keine Ahnung. Er geht aber auch nicht zu einem Arzt, der äh, er hat eine super Kompetenz, aber verschreibt euch eine OP, die ihr nicht braucht. Hm? Dieser Arzt ist als Arzt nicht vertrauenswürdig. Das gleiche, äh, the same goes for äh, a husband or, or a wife äh, or for a friend or this is just äh, universal rule, okay? In order to be trustworthy, in order to be, uh, um, um vertrauenswürdig zu wirken, you need a balance between character and competence. Sie brauchen uh, ein, ein, eine Balance zwischen Charakter und Kompetenz. Hm? Kompetenz ist was, uh, uh, so competence is what you learn usually in your, uh, in your studies, but Nobody is taking enough or, or, or very few people are, are taking enough energy into building up mm, good character into our uh, future managers. And then we see things happening like in, in Volkswagen, okay? 
uh, uh, Volkswagen Dieselgate and stuff like that. <clears throat> so we need both. If we don't have both, uh, you cannot engage uh, into the next level. So is that is that cool? Are we cool with trustworthiness? Irgendwelche Fragen in Deutsch? Sollte ich was wiederholen? We need trustworthiness at an individual level. Nobody can, can tell you who is trustworthy at, at the beginning, uh, but you will know. So uh, it, once you start working in a company, you will know very soon who is trustworthy and who is not. Okay, so this is not the problem. We have an instinct for it because it's so important. So, questions? Okay, so then we call um, the next level. Second level, I guess, is the relational. Okay, so now we have not only one individual, we have a relationship. So and and all these things that I'm I'm talking about uh, are are worth uh, uh, thinking about also in in a private manner. Okay, so uh, you will see this lecture is not only about uh, learning uh, a lot of things about project management. I would like to uh, uh, because you're in the last semester. I would like my students to be. Um, we will talk about psychopathy, we will talk about uh, uh, psychology, we will talk about stuff that uh, it's also interesting from a human perspective and that you can apply also to your real personal life. So the next level is trust. So in any relationship, you need trust. Remember, we're talking about management as achieving goals while increasing trust. So that's why we're talking about trust at this level. Wait. Uh, I'm running out of space here, so what should I do? I'm going to put it closer so that I get the whole picture. So the second level, wait, the second level is going to be relational. Um, and we, we're talking about trust. I'm just repeating uh, so that I get the whole picture later on. And the thing is that, and here's the important thing, you cannot achieve uh, or increase trust without being trustworthy. Okay, so I repeat. You cannot increase trust. You cannot manage because you want to increase trust with management, you cannot increase trust without being trustworthy. I, uh, so the, the price you have to pay if you're not trustworthy is that you will not be able to lead, okay, on the long run. So you can fool some people sometime, but not all the time. You cannot increase trust without being trustworthy and this is something that we call a principle okay it, it is it is just self evident uh, for me uh, just like uh, you cannot have a long-term relationship uh, with, with your girlfriend or boyfriend or whatever if uh, you're not trustworthy, okay? If you are fundamentally wrong, if your character is fundamentally wrong, at some point, your partner will know and then your relationship is over, okay? This is just, it just goes for personal, personal level 
for your personal life as well. So are we cool with this? Trustworthiness, trust, yeah? If I don't hear anything, I guess you can follow. Um, the next level is the managerial level. So at this level, uh, we want to uh, empower. In German, Befähigung, okay, in systematische Befähigung. Uh, so this is uh, your uh, your worker, your uh, employee, and this is your hand, the hand of the management that is trying to empower these people towards. Uh, so this is your hand. I painted the same color, and then the the your your worker. Okay. You're trying to bring uh, your your process owner, your people, your your processes to higher performance levels. Okay, also durch die Befähigung versuchen wir die industrielle Leistungsfähigkeit zu erhöhen, dadurch, dass wir Menschen äh, und Prozesse halt äh, ähm, einfach besser machen. We want to get processes and people better. I hope that this makes sense. Um, the the thing is that, um, or, or the funny thing is that uh, the price you have to pay for not being uh, or for not having trust-based uh, relationships, is that you cannot empower people. So you cannot empower people. People or processes. If you're not trustworthy. If without trust, I guess. Without trust. So without trust, no empowerment, without trustworthiness, no trust. So it, it all boils down to uh, your individual characteristics, okay? Who you are and what you can do. But mostly who you are, because a lot of people can do what you can. So. so, and the last level that we will talk about is uh, the fourth and last level, is the uh, organizational level. At this level, uh, we are uh, looking for alignment. In German, um, eine gemeinsame Ausrichtung. So we want all the all these uh, vector arrows that we're we're pointing in. Uh, we want all these vector arrows to point uh, to the same uh, organizational goal. We want controlling to to focus on the same things that um, quality management does, vertrieb and so on. So we are, we all want to support uh, the same. Um, strategic goals. These are the strategic goals. Of the organization. And the, the, the issue is that we want that the whole organization, the people in the organization all work together towards uh, the same uh, strategic goals. So the thing is that uh, you cannot attain uh, organizational alignment without systematic empowerment. It's the requirements uh, and competition are very high, so you need to, to train your people, to bring them into artificial intelligence or digitalization, we will talk about, and stuff like that. But if you're not, if you don't have a trust relationship with them, they will think maybe that you want to introduce uh, artificial intelligence to get rid of the jobs. Um, and uh, so fundamentally, it all boils down to being trustworthy, build their relationships, and the rest just follows easily. 
Okay, so any questions to this concept? Get some water. Hat jemand Fragen? Keine Fragen? Okay. So no questions, uh, I guess, uh, I don't know. Um, that, that can be good or it can be bad, uh, you decide, okay? If you ask, uh, you decide. So the, the, the next thing is we're going to look at uh, what is a process and what is a project, okay? So what is a process? Remember the concepts we saw in the beginning, okay? So this is like our guide, process and project management. We talked about management and now we talk about process. So this, now we talk about uh, process uh, and this define actually what is a process. Later on, we will define what is a project. Let me put a line here some, somewhere to get a little order in my thoughts. So what, what is a process for you? How can you describe what a process is? Just with your words. Was ist ein Prozess? Somebody answer? Hello? No? Nobody? Okay. So, um, let's say just to put it in a picture, we can talk about a process like uh, like a uh, defined succession of steps. One, two, three, and so on, and end steps that transform an input into an output. Okay. And the customer, which is who is at the end, okay, so this is our this is our our process limits. Okay, so this is our process. Let's say let me paint put it uh, somehow uh, blue. Okay. Um, the customer who is at the end, the customer is gonna give us money. for whatever that we are producing or selling or something, right? So we are transforming an input into an output and somebody is ready to pay. Customer, always paying the customer with a heart, okay? Um, is ready to pay for this output so that we can keep on. Um, so, and this, what we're selling, whatever output, is something that is of value, the, the output, the output, O, has a value for the customer, Because otherwise, he or she would not pay for it, right? Hmm? So, what do we do in this process? Is uh, we are uh, sort of uh, moving we are moving um, stuff 
in order to create uh, such value. What are we moving? We're moving material or uh, we are moving information. or we are moving energy or whatever I don't know whatever you want so that we can create our output we're moving people hmm? um, because we're talking about movement of material or, and so on and we are adding value to that um, we're talking about a value flow Okay, because we are, remember, we are creating value for a customer. So, and because we have a movement, we have a flow, and a different a different um, word for flow in uh, in English is uh, stream. A value stream. So uh, in in German, that uh, Strom. Okay. Uh, I will put it in German too. That. So please uh, apologize uh, if I use German, but uh, 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 some I mean experience uh, is is showing that not not everybody is very uh, is very fond with English. That's why I try to to explain it also in German sometimes when it's important. Otherwise, people get lost. So when we're talking about a value stream, we are talking about a process. So when we über Wertströme reden, reden wir über Prozesse. And, and, and actually, these two these two concepts are uh, are equal. Okay. So whenever you use the word process, think about a value stream. Whenever you use the word a value stream, think about a process. They are uh, interchangeable. You can uh, you can use them either way, okay? So uh, I repeat, the the process is a sequence that transforms an input. I put it here. Sequence transforming. input into output so e is input into output this is a process this is it's a defined sequence okay Standardized, whatever, and it's moving material from A to B, information, energy, people, whatever, to create value for a customer. This customer uh, is ready to pay for it. That's why we know that is uh, 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 that whatever we do has a value, and therefore we call process a value stream. So that's basically the idea. Are we cool with that? Any questions? Guys, some feedback would help. Just say yes or no, or just repeat. Is that okay? Yep. Thank you. Good. So uh, we transform a, an input into an output, and this is a process. And um, the the funny thing is that uh, processes have never an end. Processes, processes, never stop. Never stop. Because whatever input, let's say we have one process here, P1, output 1, Whatever the output one is, some other process is going to take it as an input and use it to 
create another output. So let's say we have a P1 is the process of um, assembling a motor in a factory. Hmm? Um, our input is some aluminium. Uh, the process is to create the motor um, through uh, a uh, foundry and some machining and assembly, and then we get an output which is the motor block, okay, which is the motor uh, assembly. But this O1, which is the motor assembly, goes to the input uh, factory of assembly of the motor into the car. And then uh, the, the P2 is the process of assembling the car. And then the car goes and gets uh, assembled, and which is the output 2. And this output 2 is another input for the next uh, auto-selling uh, process and, and so on and so forth. So it's never-ending and in the end... Uh, ideally, we are going to have a circular economy, okay, which is uh, taking uh, the the car that nobody wants to buy and recycling it a hundred percent and put it in uh, into the pipeline again, okay. So processes never stop; they don't have a beginning or an end. Anything in nature is a process. If you think of, of something in nature, uh, you, you're dealing with a process. One, uh, one good example uh, is uh, to think about a process is um, if you take yourself, you are yourself a process of nature. And let's say, uh, let, me, let me get uh, here the first name, Katerina. Katerina wants to lose some weight, okay? So we uh, look at her as a process, Katerina. Katerina, which is a process. And here we have an input, whatever she eats, and here an output, the uh, kilograms she weights every day herself. So we can measure the input uh, by the way uh, she eats, so the kilocalories, and we can measure the process Katerina by uh, measuring the number of minutes of sport that uh, she performs every day. So we are measuring Katerina's performance by the input, output, or process with three different KPIs. The fact of the matter is as long as Katerina leaves, she will have a metabolic process that uh, helps us uh, um, perform measurement on the process, okay? So one important lecture of this is that, um, as you might intuitively uh, notice, depending on how you measure Katerina's uh, performance, you get a different behavior, okay? So if, uh, if Katerina looks only uh, to, the, to what she's eating, the kilocalories, then you will get a different behavior as if you look only at whatever sport she does, if, as, uh, yeah, whereas you look at the, the kilograms, you get another a different behavior, totally different. So maybe you've heard of Weight Watchers, stuff like that, right? So uh, one important message here, let me make a little um, uh, avatar to make sure uh, you know it's important. One important message is that So this is important. Um, behavior is a function of the measurement. So uh, because a management system
measures performance. The important question will be to decide what to measure uh, when. Okay? So management systems are all about measuring and um, so one thing I want you to look at in the internet on this regard is Goodhart's law and um, I would like you to uh, to investigate a little bit yourself what Goodhart's law is and what are the implications of Goodhart's law for a management system okay so a uh, re research question which could very well be uh, an exam question okay implications of Goodhart's law um, for a management system. Okay, you just uh, go to Google and just help yourself with that. If you have any questions, just uh, feel free to contact me and we can discuss, okay? So, any issues so far? What is the process? <clears throat> no. Okay, so the third question we're going to deal with today is what is... project okay we cool with that so uh, the question of what is a project is it's let's say intuitive duplicate if you think about an example let's say uh, building a house okay remember I put uh, the example of Katarina before uh, now let's say we try to build a house and this is our project well we have what do we have when we try to build a house? We have uh, uh, T0, begin, right? We, we know when we want to begin, time 0, time 1, and end, right? We have some uh, money and manpower and bam bam bam, also we have resources. And we have a plan right so we have certain set if this is time if this is t0 and this is t1 we know that first we need to create the fundamentals then we create the structure then we create the roof and after once we have uh, started with the roof we can start with the electrical and uh, we can start with the, the uh, plumbing and whatever shit we need to do until uh, before the um, winter comes and then uh, we need to have our house done so otherwise we pay double rent and we don't want that right so uh, we have certain uh, 
so-called work, work packages, work packages that help us uh, discern when what uh, needs to be done. Work package. As I said, all this is going to be sent to you via email on a PDF. As long as you are in Elias, you will get all this information. I guess this helps uh, later on. I concentrate. So is the example of, of a project of a house, uh, house in English, house uh, clear? So what, what is the issue here? What is the difference between a project and a process? The fact is that uh, a project has a beginning and an end. And end. Okay. Without beginning and end, we will not have a project. And because of this fact, we will be having two different... So is, is this clear? Just as a, as a general concept, definition. The same goes, this about uh, Goodhart goes also for... This is general, okay? This goes also for uh, projects, so for both. Hmm. Behavior is also a function of the merit of the measurement. If you if you push push your people in the in the project uh, to get fast, then you will you will suffer on quality and stuff like that, okay? So, any questions so far? So now we now we know what we talk about, okay? So we're talking about process management and project management, okay? And uh, our next uh, step is to know how to perform process management and project management. So how do we perform process management and project management? Let's start with that discussion, which is a very interesting one. Let's say um, here to oh, sorry two point one uh, I, I hope that the, the uh, explanation is clear if something is not clear. Uh, let me know. Process management. I try to make the, uh, the notes as clear as possible, but I don't know. If you have any idea how to do it better, just let me know. Um, anyway, now we now we're gonna we're gonna go and we're gonna say, okay, we need to uh, manage a process. Okay, let's say we have here you future manager of, I don't know, production facility, Katerina. I'm sorry, Katerina, I'm taking you all day. But, uh, so Katerina is the production leader in a factory. And uh, 
the I don't know who uh, Ezra is the factory manager. Okay. So uh, and uh, Katarina is uh, reporting to uh, in the management team from production as production leader to the factory manager and you got and and Katarina wants to uh, get better with the quality of the product. Okay. So the first thing you do is you go and you measure your quality. Okay, the KPI, quality, and you measure it. So your first step is you measure quality. You measure the, uh, let's say, first step, number one, is measure the uh, quality. And you have, uh, let's say, a number of uh, wrong parts in your production. Um, okay, so this is your point today. You have that much wrong parts. Uh, this is time. So today you have this measurement. And because of that, um, you go and then you describe your process of production. And then you say, okay, I have these steps. We will learn how to describe our process. But uh, I guess the second step that Katarina is going to do is to uh, describe the process. in order to know what are the important issues that are, uh, let's say here, uh, I have some uh, machines. So machine number one, uh, machine number three has so many mistakes and so on. And this is the number of mistakes. So see, the third step is doing a prioritization prioritization of the number of mistakes being done and uh, the fourth step is to uh, finding out why uh, I just painted an Ishikawa diagram I guess you know that number four is to uh, know uh, make an analysis to know why uh, you have so many mistakes in machine number one. So you take just your top one priority to, uh, so you're asking why you have so many mistakes in machine number one. Then after you have done your analysis, you're looking at electricity, you're looking at the plumbing, you're looking at whatever. Then you describe an action, what to do to get better. Okay. And step number five is an action. what to do to get better. Once you have described what to do to get better, you implement it, and then you measure again. And uh, hopefully you have gotten better. So the last step is to uh, make sure that uh, this action that has helped you get better is standardized, is uh, inserted into the process. So uh, this step is uh, standardization, number six. You want to uh, standardize. Whatever you did to the machine, uh, you got it better, so you want to put it into the process. And this, let's say, cycle, 
one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six repeats all the time. Okay? It just keeps repeating forever. Well, it turns out that this cycle has a name, okay? So uh, if you go to number one, you have a check. Okay, so number one is called a check. Number two, uh, three and four phase, it's called a plan. Number five, it's called do because you're doing stuff in action. Number six is called act because you're standardizing. Okay, so as you can see, we start with one, we start with uh, check, C, we continue with P, then D, and then C, P, D, and so on and so forth until we standardize our process. So we call our project manage, uh, process management uh, CPDNA. Let me put it down. This is important. This is this was one of the questions in last exam. CPD n times until you get uh, an acceptable performance. Okay, so this is our process management uh, routine. Okay. Then we go to the, uh, let's say, project management. And uh, now we get uh, same people. Katarina reports to Ezra, factory manager, wait, uh, here, Ezra, Katarina, So production leader, and then we report here, suck. Factory manager. And now we don't have a project, we don't have a process, we have a project. Okay, so things are different. Now we want uh, to transfer one production line to uh, the factory in Hong Kong. Okay, <clears throat> so the first thing we do is we create a plan. First step is to create a plan, a rough idea of what we want to do. Uh, once we have the plan, uh, we go and uh, we create uh, an overview of uh, the process with uh, one uh, important remark. We use two colors here, one uh, blue, for instance, for the plan what we have planned, and green for the uh, real, okay? In that respect, we can always check what we have planned and we have in reality. So we can always have uh, a vision of uh, both states. 
The rest is similar. We describe uh, why we are out of performance. Let's say uh, priority out of timely performance. Number four is uh, the analysis. I guess, uh, wait, this should be number three, this should be number four, because I jumped one step, wait a minute, this is number three, this is number four, because we need to know how we measure uh, success, let's say uh, we measure uh, on the scheduling, so time performance, so how long are we delayed, okay. <clears throat> time performance indicator and uh, this would be step number two measure uh, delay in the project it can start with a delay so we need to get the delay to zero then uh, the next step is to uh, after the prioritization is to analyze The top one priority why uh, we are delayed so we only analyze one once we have analyzed we introduce new actions to our plan that are gonna help us uh, get better and then we measure our delay again and uh, we repeat this until we get to a project uh, standard so this is the uh, number, this was number two, this is the number six, standard. So that uh, we have the same uh, logic, uh, here we have our uh, do, then we have uh, number two is our uh, check number three four and five are our plan and uh, number six is our act so we start with uh, D C P D C P pam 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 uh, and A and that's why our project management process is called D C P N A okay So this was a little bit, uh, I know it was fast, but it was fast so that you look at it many times, okay? This was, this was asked in the last exam. I usually ask it always because it's so important. Um, I, I would like to ask you <laughs> to, uh, in order to get uh, uh, familiar with it, to create two examples of uh, CPD, NA, and DCP, NA, project and process management. So this is uh, your research question that will help you prepare for the exam at the same time. Give me two examples, okay? Prepare them for yourself, as detailed as possible, just as, as I've, I've done now, uh, from your real life. Okay, so you can, let's say, you have a process, I don't know, um, losing weight or, or, or preparing for an exam or whatever. And then uh, give me an example of a project for yourself, like, like writing your master thesis, your, your bachelor thesis or whatever. Okay, so prepare for yourself two examples of this because uh, chances are high that I ask you in the exam to give me two examples and a detailed description of process management and project management um, processes, okay? Is that cool? This is 
for you to prepare for the exam. Anyway. All right, any questions? <clears throat> Then uh, I will upload uh, the material to uh, the website, as I said. Uh, I, you will get a PDF with these notes uh, as, of, as of right now. I'm done for today. I hope you enjoyed. And if you have any feedback, just let me know. Okay? Have a nice evening and uh, uh, stay safe. Bye-bye.